Welcome to the Law Society Younger Members Committee Career Information Session number 10, when Avril Flannery speaks to Keith O'Malley about qualifying in Britain and other jurisdictions. I'd just like to welcome everyone to the final Younger Members Committee session and I will be fielding questions to Keith O'Malley, the Head of Support Services at the Law Society. Hello Keith. Hi. Hi, thank you very much for giving us all your in-depth knowledge and I've had the benefit of it, of it all day so thank you and um, I'm the Chair of the Younger Members Committee and I'm a solicitor at Cal and Tansy Solicitors as well. Um, as I said, we've had 10 sessions, so this is our final session and you'll be able to catch up on all of our sessions again uh, when all of the links are shared and Michelle Nolan, our secretary, will be sharing that. Um, we've had wonderful sessions already. We've talked about the in-house lawyer. Um, you might have heard earlier, Justin as well, who does pra small practice sessions. We've also looked at setting up your own practice or purchasing a practice, creating the career that's right for you, your CV and assessing your potential. So I think qualifying and working in Britain and other jurisdictions is, is very um it's very on point at the moment with remote working and maybe the possibilities to work internationally might become even more broader and especially with covid we're all looking abroad at other countries that seem to be doing better than us and might be wondering what opportunities are there or how do we avail of them so i'm going to open up with keith here who's going to give us a whistle stop tour on multiple jurisdictions and uh thank you very much keith okay thank you Avril. Uh, I need to preface everything I say with uh, regulations change all the time. So I might say something this evening and there could be a, a, a decision to change it in Auckland, New Zealand or uh, Sydney, Australia. Uh, and sometimes as well, things are open to interpretation. So I may say that, uh, you know, you will not qualify or you won't be uh, able to study uh, law in Australia if you don't have a law degree. Uh, and then somebody can phone me a week later and say, uh, ha ha, I just, you know, got through the assessment uh, process and uh, everything was fine. So uh, please take what I say as, a, you know, a guide and, and uh, you know, a, a general guide, but check everything, uh, your, your facts and, and uh, you know, make sure yourself uh, where, where you stand on uh, if you're looking at a, uh, qualifying in a different jurisdiction or in uh, working in one. I'm going to start with England and Wales. Well, the good thing about England and Wales is there's no uh, a problem there in terms of you don't need a work visa. Uh, you can uh, go over and work anytime you want in England and Wales. On the qualification side as well, it is very easy. Uh, it, it, you know, there was at one stage a, a, a course that people needed to, to to do as part of PPC2 on conveyancing, that's been dropped. If you have an Irish qualification, you uh, have reciprocal rights for a full uh, qualification, no questions asked in England and Wales. There's two things you need. One is, uh, as I understand it anyway, I believe you need a practicing cert. You need to have an Irish practicing cert, be holding an Irish practicing cert if you uh, uh, want to apply for an English uh, qualification. And the second thing you need to do is to get a certificate of good standing from the Law Society. The regulation department will give these to you. If you ask for several of them, they'll start charging you, but you're entitled to certainly one uh, upfront uh, free of charge, as I understand it. Uh, so you can get... Uh, you know everything you need uh, together you have to contact not the law society in england and wales but the solicitor regulatory authority uh, and you have to sign on for uh, an account on, on solicitor regulatory authority and go through the process but it is simple and uh, we don't uh, get reports from people uh, having problems with that i'm not going to talk about scotland because there is an exam as i understand it, that uh, you need to do if you want to qualify in scotland Scotland, but we have very few to almost nobody uh, looking to qualify. Irish solicitors is uh, uh, qualifying in Scotland. There are lots.
lots of people who uh, want to qualify in Northern Ireland. And the Northern Ireland process is very easy. It, uh, you know, simple. It takes a bit of time. They say you should allow for uh, up to three months uh, time frame. Uh, cost is about 150 pounds sterling in registration fee and in uh, administration uh, fee. But the uh, as I understand it, there's no mention of a, a law society, an Irish law society, uh, practicing certain requirements. So if you happen to maybe have qualified uh, and uh, not yet taken out of practicing cert, uh, you know, it doesn't, that's not going to stop you uh, qualifying in Northern Ireland if you want to. Uh, you have uh, some information to provide, Avril, on the whole uh, on I do. networking. I do. And I just want to say to, that I have registered in England and Wales and Northern Ireland. And the part I can tell you, it was a very easy process and the certificate of good standing was required for both. And they were nearly identical. So I nearly did the two at the same time. Um, the only thing was I did England and Wales first, then did Northern Ireland. And then I had to go get a certificate of good standing from England and Wales as well. So it was just so it's almost like the more jurisdictions you register and the more you have to contact to register so I suppose that's just something but it was interesting and yes Scotland the, the exam I saw was um, the criminal one so I didn't go ahead with that but I thought it was very interesting I like Scotland so just to let everybody know that yeah we've been the younger members committee has been fostering ties with um, the junior lawyers division in the UK so we have an equivalent committees on other jurisdictions so it's the junior lawyer division in the UK and they have lots of um, subgroups so they're local groups so if you want to go to the you know eastern UK or greater London area midlands northeast northwest southwest east southwest Wales Yorkshire so many you can reach out to those individual ones and you can also um, attend their networking events as well or look to attend their networking events and try and foster ties outside of that so it's just a little bit different there's also the Scottish Young Lawyers Association and um, they're 10 years PQE independent again they have events as well so if you link up with them and they're also holding the European Young Bar Association Spring Conference which I'll be talking about later on and also the Northern Ireland Young Solicitors Association Association, they cover up to 10 years PQE. Again, you can link up with them yourself. But we've also fostered ties. We're trying to organize joint events. So you want to keep an eye out and you know, might be a way to link link up with people on LinkedIn and everything. LinkedIn is becoming very active now for younger lawyers and especially through these subgroups as well as ways to reach out. So that's that's that for that part, Keith. So um, if we will publish this with the slides at the end. So I'll give this information about these different organizations because you might forget the full names or you might have written them down. So I'll have them. So don't worry about that. Great. Thank you. Thank so you. Moving outside of the British Isles, uh, you know, we're onto the European Union. And of course, most of the European Union doesn't operate uh, so strictly under the common law uh, uh, laws as uh, we and, and Britain do. Uh, and so, you know, law can be quite different in uh, places like France and, and, and Spain. But for an Irish lawyer who wants to qualify uh, in or wants to operate or work in any European Union, there is a uh, system in place. It's both the, the same system as for Irish lawyers going to other European countries and for uh, other European lawyers coming to Ireland. It's called the registered lawyer, the registered European lawyer uh, uh, arrangement. And what it means is if somebody uh, from Ireland goes to Spain, maybe Barcelona, and they just Decide they want to uh, act as a as 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 a lawyer there. They uh, take out a registered European lawyer uh, status with the Spanish. Uh, 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 bar association and uh, they operate under their own title so you don't operate under the uh, the spanish name which i wrote it down here is uh, abogado you uh, operate under the irish uh, term solicitor so you would be a solicitor or a registered uh, european lawyer uh, and if you do this and you do this for three years, you register for three consecutive years as a uh, REL, as a registered European lawyer, you can then take out uh, uh, local uh, the local qualification. So if you're in Spain, you can become an abogado, or if you're in uh, France, you can become an avocat, or in Germany, a, a racial 
Walt, uh, my my German isn't very good. But no. so uh, in in all these countries, uh, Irish uh, uh, solicitors have an absolute right to go to set up to uh, register uh, as a, a recognised lawyer within that jurisdiction work. And if they stay there for three years to, if they want to take the local uh, 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 qualification. Uh, you again uh, had links with- uh, The uh, European, yeah, no, we do, we do. And just a quick question on that, Keith, do you have to be practising in those jurisdictions or is it just, you just have to kind of re renew your practicing certificate for want of a better word in the European jurisdictions or is there any other criteria to, to meet? No, there's no criteria. It's uh, yeah. quite simply, if you want to, you know, if you go to, uh, to Brussels and you want to start uh, operating as, as a uh, solicitor in Brussels, you yeah. don't have any obligation to the Irish uh, society, to the Law Society in Ireland, because you're operating outside uh, the jurisdiction. But if you want to uh, access the credibility and, uh, and all of that, that your qualification holds, what you do is you register as, as a lawyer uh, uh, locally. So okay. Okay. by registering Law, uh, as, a, as a lawyer locally, you're uh, establishing your 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 legal uh, credibility. Okay, so and I suppose if people want to start remote working from um, Spain, <laughs> you know, and that, that if that option ever becomes open to people, you kind of wonder about qualifying in that jurisdiction. And I, I suppose people might be interested to hear about that also. So yes, no, we have been fostering ties with the European Young Bar Association, which is great. Um, massive, we, 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 we were registered the Younger Members Committee um, only last week, so it's fantastic. But everyone in Ireland is a European citizen and again, a European lawyer. So individuals can also register for the events. So if you go onto the European Young Bar Association, you'll see on their website all of the events that they have and that you can register for their events. So coming up on the 14th of May, there's a virtual spring conference and the Young Scottish Young Lawyers Association are hosting the event in Edinburgh. So had it been going ahead, not virtually, the event would have been on Edinburgh and I'm told that these events are brilliant. So, you know, but the virtual events are proving very good. As regards, I know I was at an American Bar Association event recently, and I'll talk about that later, but it was actually a great networking opportunity and virtually it was it was brilliant. I, I, I almost I, we've become more comfortable with it. It's becoming easier. Um, then um, there's a summer um, event coming up, which has been held by Ukraine National Bar Youth Committee is what they are called. That's also mentioned on the EYBA website. And there's an international weekend as well on September. So, you know, that's an opportunity then to meet the American Bar Associations, I presume Russia, there'll be loads of different, you know, loads of different younger members committees and types of associations there. So you'll be able to foster more ties again. So um, that's, that's that for now. So a lot of them have Facebook pages as well and um, websites. So you'll be able to look, look them up and see what they have and register. And there's usually a fee for some things, but so a lot of them are being are free at the moment with COVID. So um, it's a good time to opportunity to take advantage and check them out. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I think I put the slides over. Uh, I started sharing slides. I can't really see them on mine. Can you see a slide up at the moment, Avril? Um, I can't, but I have a different view on. So let me just see. Um, yeah, I don't see slides at the moment. Okay, because, uh, well, then that's good. I didn't... Uh, uh, get this uh, start the slides then during your your uh, oh that's okay yeah uh, yeah can't see them that's great thank you very much uh i'm going to uh, share slides in a moment one thing i would say to you is michelle will be sending out a copy of the slides to everyone i think there's 17 slides in total here uh, mm -hmm. but one thing i would say and it really becomes relevant uh, to the next country we're going to look at which is australia on the Law Society website, there's a whole lot of, there's a section about working abroad and there's a whole lot of uh, leaflets like this. This one's about 20 pages long. It's on working in New Zealand. There's another one in Australia, which is even uh, uh, longer. And there's an awful lot of information on it. 
uh, including information about uh, from people who uh, are living out in Australia uh, or New Zealand and talking about their own experience. So they're really, really useful, those slides. And they're in the uh, career section of the Law Society website uh, under working abroad. Uh, so uh, very, very useful. But what we're going to do now is, is talk through, uh, we're, we're taking ourselves off to Australia and then on to New Zealand. And what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, is I'm going to share some slides just so we can see uh, wh where they're at. Uh, bear with me a second. I think this is the right one. Yeah, now I just need to start the... Uh... Okay, just... So I hope everybody can see a slide up saying Australia, uh, information on qualifying above that. And generally in Australia, you need to have a law degree if you want to go on and uh, study law. And there are each state has their own accreditation process, but you start with a, a uh, the same kind of assessment that's done throughout all of Australia. So it's called, and you can Google this, it's called the Uniform uh, Principles for Accessing Qualifications. And it's quite a detailed document, uh, but what you've got to do is you've got to match up, say, uh, your law degree uh, against uh, this, and uh, you, you've got to judge where you are. Over the years, it kind of seems to go up and down whether a person uh, you know, needs a straight law degree, in other words, a law degree and nothing else, or if you have a law degree in business or a law degree in Spanish, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, is, will, will that uh, work in, in Australia? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If you uh, go through the uh, qualification process uh, in Australia, you do your exams uh, and uh, you, you qualify, you can practice anywhere in Australia. And as far as I know, it also, it, it, it does also qualify you uh, for uh, qualifying in other places like Tasmania and New Zealand. Uh, going on to the next slide, I'm just going to uh, touch this here. Uh, yeah, I think I went the wrong way there. Yes. Uh, just, a, just one question, Keith. Um, yeah. If um, if a country requires a law degree such as, as Australia, would a master's suffice if law was not your undergrad? Would they consider master's degrees or postgraduates? I, I'm I'm not sure. Avril. Yeah, fair. Uh, my, uh, I have a feeling, you know, all the time they're looking for, uh, they, they can get quite fixed on, on the, the first degree, on the undergraduate degree. Mm. So, uh, you know, you can get caught a little bit. I've seen, you know, crazy situations where they look at somebody's details and they say, no, no, no. You know, they shouldn't, they should take into account uh, at the, the, the training, uh, the PPC courses and, and uh, the time spent in offices and things like that but sometimes uh, in various jurisdictions get quite stuck on on uh, the, the undergraduate degree okay. But okay in terms of working in australia most people who go to australia go on a temporary working visa and that tends to be for 12 months you can stay longer if you uh, are uh, go and, and work out in the outback for a period of time and uh, you have to be 30 years of age or younger uh, uh, by the time you uh, qualify for it that might have changed but uh, that traditionally is the way the other uh, kind of visa that most is relevant to most irish people is a temporary vis business visa subclass 457 and what tends to happen to people is they go out out on a temporary working visa they uh, go to work someplace the employer likes them they like the employer and they decide to, to go the the next uh, for the next type of visa and that's this second one here the temporary uh, business visa where an employer sponsors you and you might they they you know have to uh, uh, make the case that you can do a job that they, they can't get somebody else for. They might be able to call you a solicitor, uh, but what they can do is use a term like legal expert and, and uh, you know, the, the Australian
Australian employers tend to, particularly the, the legal firms, tend to know this area very well and know the way around it. So, uh, you know, you, you will be in good hands if you have a relationship with uh, a firm who want to keep you on and, uh, you know, hopefully, it, or, you know, get you to stay on as they see it, hopefully as long as possible in Australia. The next place we're going to look at is New Zealand. We don't have many people qualifying in New Zealand. Uh, the, the main reason is most people uh, uh, will tend to go to Australia, maybe qualify there and then go on to New Zealand. New Zealand is expensive. It's the, the, they have that they, a very similar uh, application process to the Australian one. You start by uh, submitting a, an application to the Council for Legal Education. Uh, and the application is costly. It's about 1,500 uh, New Zealand dollars. And the exams and legal, uh, you, you then go ahead and do exams and legal studies courses, and they're expensive. So I often think, you know, somebody might go to New Zealand, see the price of things, go, uh, you know, uh, fly across to Australia, spend a year or two there qualifying as, a, uh, as an Australian lawyer and, and uh, going back to New Zealand then. The one thing I would have to say about New Zealand is they seem to be incredibly welcoming. We had a person researching, a, a solicitor researching this, uh, two different people, and the same thing happened to them both. They both were told by, you know, they phoned up employers and uh, were asking questions about, would you take on an uh, Irish solicitor if one arrived over? And they got, on multiple times, they got offers of, of jobs over the phone. Oh, wow, you know, you're an Irish uh, solicitor and you're going to come out and work, you know, in uh, Christchurch or in Auckland or whatever, you know, look, if you're looking for a job, uh, send me a, a, an email beforehand. I'm sure we'd have something for you here, you know, or if not, we'll get something else for you. So we were really surprised to find out how welcoming uh, Australian employers were uh, for, for Irish solicitors who wanted to go out there. The next thing is in terms of how people tend to uh, uh, travel out there, they go out on a, uh, on a working holiday visa and then there's uh, essential skills uh, visa which is uh, unfortunately solicitors are not uh, you know on the list of essential skills in either New Zealand or Australia so you know you have carpenters and you have nurses and, and a whole lot of people like that but uh, lawyers are, are not on that however you still can get through and you will tend to get through through the silver fern visa uh, program and this is a program that's set up where if you can get a job uh, if an employer uh, is uh, wants to hire you and can make the case that, uh, that they they are not hiring you instead of a a local person uh, you will progress or you know you will get it and you start with a silver fern job search visa if that works out and you you get on well with the uh, the Floor, you go on and take the next one, the Silver Fern Practical Experience Visa, and the next one is the a Skilled Migrant uh, Visa. Uh, you may have something to say, but I'll do one more uh, uh, place and kind of finish up with Australia, if that's all right. That's uh, and then uh, you can, uh, I'm sure, can uh, have uh, your say then. In terms of Hong Kong, there's about 5,000 lawyers practicing in Hong Kong. About half of them are Americans, 20% are British and Irish. So, uh, you know, that's a, 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 quite a large number. You're talking about 1,000 uh, British and Irish lawyers in Hong Kong. Over the last few years, a whole lot of the, I mean, there have been the challenges of the protests there and all of that, but a whole lot of opportunities have opened up for law firms to do business from Hong Kong in mainland China. So uh, the uh, profession has been growing and growing uh, uh, quickly there. There is a qualified lawyer's uh, qualification exam in Hong Kong that you need to do. If you if you go over there, you will work for a while on the strength of your uh, your own qualification, uh, but you are required if you want to uh, stay there and build a career to do the qualified lawyer's qualification exam. If, in mainland China, uh, if you're working with an international firm, there's no need to qualify uh, locally. Uh, there is a, uh, a local qualification, but it's much more focused on uh, 
Chinese lawyers. Singapore is a large legal center. And for uh, you know quite a while now, they've been very much uh, embracing uh, British law and common uh, law. And uh, you know they have very much reached out and said, anyone with an English qualification uh, it can come over and, and, and uh, work uh, here in Singapore. So it's a place that's uh, very welcoming to uh, British and Irish lawyers. Any, any thoughts, Avril? Oh yeah, just a couple of questions in on the chat, Keith. Thanks very much. Um, just with regard to, um, there was one person who just fielded a question about um, a non-EU national obtaining a traineeship in Ireland. Um, now, maybe you might want to look at that at the end, or would you like to deal with that now? He's talking about getting a traineeship in what country? Uh, here, actually, but they're, they're a non-EU national. Oh, yeah. Well, we're not covering that, unfortunately, today. You know, there's only so much. We've got a half an hour. We can't yeah. go into, uh, you know, what we're looking at today are, yeah. uh, uh, you know, opportunities for people outside. Okay. Uh, well, could they could they, they could contact Career Support anyway, Keith, after the session? Well, absolutely, yes. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. So just, just for that person, participant, you can contact uh, Keith O'Malley's team and Career Support and Law Society of Ireland about obtaining um, a um, about how to go about getting a traineeship here. Um, just one other question from somebody. What was the name of the body again to apply for, for Australia? To Australia? Uh, if if that person sends us their, it, it's it's a detailed name. I, I don't have it in front of me. Do I have it in front of me? Sorry. Uh, since you go back and, and look at the slide. Uh, Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll get it and I'll come back. It's the uh, unified, sorry, I'll go back and I'll look at the slide. One second. That's brilliant. I'll give you yeah, a second. It's, uh, it's the uniform principles for assessing qualifications. Okay. Uniform principles. And if, if somebody Googles that, it'll go straight to the Australian body. The uniform principles for assessing qualifications. That that will be on the slides as well, Keith. It anyway, will be, yes, absolutely, yeah. I'm going to go on now uh, to uh, Canada. There was a, there was a lot of interest in Canada a few years ago, and there were a lot of people. We were doing uh, exams for people uh, for their initial exams here in Dublin. Uh, we're facilitating people to do exams and, and various people and uh, various things. Some people went and some people qualified there uh, and continue to work. Uh, Deborah Flood in particular is is one person who springs to mind, but she. Uh, coincidentally had a, a Canadian citizenship from, from birth. But uh, the, there's a lot of interest, you know, Canada is considered one of the most desirable places in, in the world to, to live. It's quite, like Ireland in a lot of ways, employers are quite conservative there and uh, their process of, of, of qualifying is, is quite conservative. So there's a, a, a three-step process. The first thing you've got to do is demonstrate that you've got an education equivalent and you do that to the National Committee on Accreditation. You then need to complete a licensing process with a relevant law society. And when we're talking about the relevant law society, it depends on the province that uh, you know, you're in within Canada, Quebec, Ontario, uh, British Columbia. Each has their own uh, law society. So the National Committee on Accreditation is a national uh, Canadian body, and then you're, you find yourself dealing with the provincial uh, law society. Everybody has to do a licensing process to qualify in uh, Canada. There's no ifs or buts. You will be given some concessions uh, if you have, if you can demonstrate that you uh, have particular uh, experience, but you will not get away without doing one. I'm just going to go through uh, these two, uh, the first two steps here with a little bit more detail. On the first one, you've got to demonstrate your education equivalent, equivalent to a Canadian undergraduate LLB or JD degree, and you, out of that, you receive a certificate of qualification, and that get you ready uh, for, for the for step two or uh, you have to go and uh, study and uh, graduate from an approved Canadian law program and there's also 
one of these things you get with a lot of things in Canada, you have to do a, a test in, in English proficiency. Obviously, that's not going to be a problem for anyone from Ireland. The, uh, the step two, the licensing process, you apply to the relevant uh, law society, you get yourself a training contract, and you then do two sets of exams. You do barrister licensing exams, and you do solicitor licensing exams, and as you complete, uh, you, you have to do your professional uh, contract uh, training, you can get uh, uh, exemptions from parts of that depend if you've done a training contract in Ireland, uh, but you know, you've got to go through the, uh, the uh, process of, of applying for those exemptions and that can cut down the, the uh, time of fair but and you then get called uh, as they call a call, a call to the bar and it's a slight thing you're probably going to always be the case but you need to be in Canada to do that you can't kind of uh, uh, you know do it from uh, Ireland. The, in terms of working, people, uh, the visas people get, there's a, there is a, a good uh, kind of casual uh, working visa that uh, uh, people have used a lot. And it, it, it's a great opportunity to get a taste for Canada and see you know, whether you like it. It's called the International Experience Canada uh, Programme. And it's uh, aged, or it's relevant to people who are aged between the age of uh, 18 and 35. And it's for two one-year periods. So you can go uh, you know, for one year, you can stay on for a second year, or you can come back to, uh, to uh, you, know, you can go to other countries and go back uh, at a later time and, and get your second year and the on it's an online application and it can be expected to take about eight weeks the other one is the federal skill worker visa and this is what you're going to progress on to so you start with the international experience you develop a relationship uh, you establish a relationship with a an employer and they then uh, say that they will uh, support you sponsor you through uh, the federal uh, skill worker visa the next country I'm going on to uh, is one that there's always been a lot of interest in uh, and it's the United States. There are two stages again in the United States there's but the United States is much easier to qualify uh, than Canada because you're not required to do uh, you know in in a, a company training you go through an evaluation to uh, check that that your equivalent that your qualification is at least equivalent to uh, what, what they're looking for and you then go on and you you do bar exams almost all every state in in uh, the united states of america has their own uh, uh, jurisdiction and so you qualify in whatever state you want to work in and you're not qualified to work in, in another state so if you qualify in new, new york you're not qualified to uh, go across and work in, in seattle or whatever you need uh, to qualify uh, in that jurisdiction it is of course much easier to qualify uh, you know in a second or a third jurisdiction uh, but uh, every, every uh, jurisdiction is is separate and independent new york and california are the most popular all uh, except two states in the United States require you to have a law degree uh, as, as, as a base qualification. And the two exceptions to that are California and Delaware, I think. Uh, every once in a while it said that New York, it, uh, it doesn't require one, but as I understand it, New York does require you to uh, have a law degree. And that's gonna be established at that first evaluation stage. The next thing uh, is you do your uh, exams and they can be done in Ireland. There's lots of people do New York bar exams and do the Californian bar exams or do the study for them here uh, in Ireland uh, and are, are qualified. I'm seeing more and more uh, people qualifying at very early stages in, in their careers. I, I'm seeing people who uh, managed to qualify in New York before they, they finish their, their Irish uh, solicitor qualification. 
in terms of working, things have been a little bit tough in, uh, in v with visas over the last few years with Donald Trump in power, uh, particularly the, the third one down there, the H-1B was uh, very much stymied. The first one is, a, uh, is a, a program useful for people who are maybe just qualifying. It's a 12 month work USA uh, program, and it's part of the J-1 program, but it's for not when you're during your, your uh, time as a student, but as you finish, and it, 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 somebody who's just qualifying as a uh, as a solicitor, even though uh, you have been out of uh, you, you know mainstream uh, uh, solicitor, you've been working a job. Because you've just qualified with the Law Society, it allows you to, to avail of, of uh, this uh, visa program. The next uh, visa program is, is one very interesting if you want to spend time in the States. I think it's for a year and a half where you go and you get a job in, in the area uh, that you, you want to work in and law or whatever. Uh, and, uh, but you, it, for both the, the, those first two, the, all, all of the first three, you need to have an employer who's uh, supporting you and sponsoring you. Lotteries come up. There were years ago, there were, uh, you know, huge amounts of Irish people got the Donnelly visas through the Donnelly visa uh, lottery and through the Morrison uh, lottery. But they still are done on an almost uh, every year basis. And uh, you know, if you're interested, you most certainly, uh, you know, you can put in uh, a, a uh, in an attempt you can uh, you know apply for one on, and you just might uh, get uh, a visa and if you do you're going to get the bottom one there which is the the rolls royce of visas for the united states it's a green card it's a permanent visa you have a, 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 a an entitlement to work uh, for the rest of your life in in uh, in the states, uh, you know, it's 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 very good. I'm just mindful of the time. I don't have a, a thing in front of me here. We've gone over time, Avril. Uh, so, but I don't have an awful lot more. I, I, I can run through the next few slides if that's okay. That's okay. Uh, in terms of Cayman Islands, BVI, British Virgin Islands, Bermuda, the common law professional qualification. Uh, that's what they're looking. At, that's what uh, employers require. In the Cayman Islands, they they look for three years post qualification if you uh, want a job there. Uh, you need to have a job in order to qualify for a visa and in these locations what they're most interested in is uh, experience in, in uh, insurance financial services and, and trusts in particular. The next uh, location that Irish solicitors tend to be uh, interested in is the Gulf. There's no process for qualifying locally. Most firms present there are large USA firms. They they are most interested in large scale uh, construction and project management uh, experience and the international recruiters in London uh, are our best place to uh, represent you and, and uh, you know, provide you with options in, in terms of uh, opportunities in the Gulf. I think that's the end. That, is, that seems yes, like it is. the end. That's yeah. The, the last of the slide. Wow. And we, we just had one question maybe on the one jurisdiction you hadn't there, Keith, which is the UAE. Um, I don't, the United Arab Emirates, but yes. yeah, I don't think you have anything on that, but is there anything on the Law Society website on that? Well, the Gulf is, uh, UAE uh, yeah, yeah. Is, is covered with that, so, uh, yeah, you know, they, they have a registration process, but it's very much for local uh, solicitors. Uh, you will, you know, an Irish solicitor going out there, and there's a lot of Irish solicitors go to uh, UAE, will go out and they will work as a lawyer, uh, as an international lawyer, as opposed to a locally qualified lawyer. And they'll do that because they're part of a, a large either law firm or commercial uh, operation. So if you had some special interest like European law or anything are they more like the Cayman Islands where insurance and trust is more interesting or is there any particular area that them the Gulf would be interested in hearing from yeah, their big area is, you know, the easiest uh, kind of job to get there is if you've got a, a very good uh, large scale construction experience. They've been okay. doing so much building over a long period of time. And the other area are, are you know, large corporate uh, uh, trading companies. Uh, okay. So okay. The, 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 That's good. And there's good diplomas in the Law Society on the construction stuff as well, I think. 
there, there are in fact yeah, there's, yeah. There, there's a course it, it, it's due to start up at the end of this month uh, for people who are uh, unemployed and it's a it, it's a first class course if anyone wants information on that uh, drop me uh, or uh, drop a, an email to either myself k full stop o'malley at law society or to careers at law society.ie and mm -hmm. we'll send you information on that it's, a, loads, it's yeah. a, it, it, i'm gonna uh, put something in the uh, next legal vacancies newsletter about it but it's yeah. a really uh, uh, a great opportunity for somebody brilliant and just finally i suppose if anybody wants to reach out with american canada we have uh, made ties with the american bar association um, young lawyers division it's called and there's also the canadian bar association national young lawyers they all have different names but again they have events and networking events as well so it's no harm to kind of foster ties and firms where you might have an interest in working in or to get a steer on potential firms you should be focusing on if you're interested in it and then the law society has information on irish lawyers who are already over in those jurisdictions and to i suppose get more information more you know experience from get get in, uh, hear about the experience that these people have heard from or experienced that information is in those booklets as well so you know there's a there's a loads of information out there and we can't cover it all today keith unfortunately um so has anybody got any more questions in the chat i think we've covered everything um and just us keith one question myself with regard to the law degree does that apply as well if you had a degree a, a different undergrad degree to a law degree would that be problematic similar to australia it, it, in different jurisdictions, uh, you know, it, it can hamper you. It can hamper you in Australia, and it can hamper you in uh, several states, or most states in, in the US. Okay. Uh, they're, they're the two places where uh, not having a law degree uh, uh, is, oh a, uh, uh, you know, is, is a problem. And sometimes, uh, if it's a mixed law degree, uh, sometimes they accept it as a law degree, and other times they say it's not, you know, a, a pure law Just degree. Really depends. And what if you qualified in, you know, let's say in New Zealand, and then could you go back to Australia with your New Zealand recognised qualification, or similar in the US? You know, would it would it skip the law degree issue, or would is that a workaround? If uh, if you qualify, let's say if there was a state that would accept not having a law degree in the US, for instance, so you'd qualified there, and then you wanted to go to New York, who looked for the the law degree would that be a workaround to getting by without having your law degree i suppose i've been wondering about that and i haven't yeah. been able to find an answer oh damn it okay yeah no i just it thought is, people would be interested. an interesting one certainly yeah you know i think like a lot of things in life it's you get into you know a group of people you become say an american qualified lawyer uh, opportunities probably would open up but uh, yeah. you know at the moment uh, california and delaware are the two known states where you don't need a law degree at all you know yeah uh, but uh, the the most of the other states you do i don't know if you're qualified in california whether that would allow you to to go up kind to washington and work yeah. in washington no that's really that's been very interesting i mean i'm not going anywhere at the moment but i think um our younger younger members might be interested in heading off for a little while and getting some experiences so that would be great and again diplomas are available to help you get that bit more qualification to apply for those jobs and then probably would be recruiters as well that can help as well keith and would you have recruiters in different jurisdictions as well or names of any yes yes okay so there you go so you have your one-stop shop at uh, law society career support uh, services and keith o'malley so thank you very much for today keith thanks everybody for engaging in the chat and um, it was you kept me on my toes anyway and um Again, this session will be available on the pre-record if you want to go back and all the information is on the Law Society webpage and everything. So thank you very much, Keith. Thanks, everyone. Okay, um, I'll leave now. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.